Hello, I am Fiona Sitkin, a host of a talk show, The Bridge for Women Worldwide. And today I am hosting the 21st episode of The Bridge. Its title is Can Do Success in American Academia. It is a part of our new series, Women Contributing to the Beauty of the World. And the guest for today's show is Dr. Helen Schneider, Senior Lecturer in Economics, University of Texas in Austin. She is from Austin, Texas, and originally she is from Ukraine. Let me say a few words about myself and our talk show. A professional educator and former Fulbright scholar, I based this talk show on my Huffington Post blogs, as well as a recent book, How They Made It in America, about prominent women. It is success stories and strategies of immigrant women from Isabella Allende to Ivana Trump to fashion designer Josie Natori, plus more. And today I have a distinct honor to introduce Dr. Helen Schneider from University of Texas in Austin. You will learn today about becoming a success in American academia as a student and as a faculty, which will give you a good handle on many work-life situations. Our guest Helen Schneider is an expert on that. So stay tuned and stay with us. Welcome to the show, Helen. Hello, Mom. I am, of course, happy to see you, at least via Zoom. Um, and I admit that I have never praised you enough because it is not our family tradition. But let me introduce you properly here at the bridge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Helen Schneider is a senior lecturer at the Department of Economics, University of Texas in Austin. And she's been working there for 14 years. Helen dedicated her career to teaching in academia after being a postdoc at University of California, Berkeley and working at Los Alamos National Lab. Uh, it's my pleasure to contribute to the talk show about prominent women, and I love the ideas and many women you've interviewed on your bridge. Um, thank you so much. Um, I want to note that Helen comes from a family of educators and medical doctors, with both her parents, her uncle, her cousin, and even some of the grandparents holding PhDs and being top ranking professionals in their respective fields. But family background notwithstanding, Helen has always been her own person, making her own decisions and advancing in life in her own quiet way. One of her distinct achievements, I would say, um, showing her can-do approach is raising her three kids, Anna, William, and Maggie, which is a big deal in our day and time. Why? Because she has to combine working full-time with raising three kids, Zoom skill at home. Zoom schooling at home is very hard. I say no more. So I'm sure we will hear a lot of interesting things today from Helen. Thank you for the warm introduction, Mom. You're welcome. Um, let us start with a tough question, two in one. I believe that all women contribute to the beauty of the world in their own special ways. And this is why my talk show focuses on women. Now, the first question for you is, how do you understand the beauty of the world? And question two, how do you contribute to it? Well, first, I believe that the beauty of the world means harmony. Uh, womankind always adds the finishing harmonious touches to the world, both spiritually and physically. Uh, I'm a feminist, like Isabel Allende, one of my favorite writers, and uh, many others. 
Margaret Atwood, um, Tucker Chuk, um, and others. A second uh, on my side, I'm happy to make small improvements in the world, raising my kids to be compassionate and fair uh, to other people, as well as well-educated. Uh, personally, I do my best to give my students as a knowledge of economics uh, with the analytical skills for success in their future careers. Um, I believe the world will be more beautiful and more equitable when more people learn economics, which is my field. Okay, very nice. When more people learn economics, the world will be better, huh? All right. <laughs> um, Helen, you live in the States for 25 years now. What were your happiest times in this country and what successes made you especially happy? I will first going to Cornell University for my master's and PhD programs was very important. And uh, I do look back at my Cornell years. I also think of them um, as mo my most happy years uh, rather than simply a professional achievement. Of course, Corn Cornell is uh, a well-regarded Ivy League school, uh, but what also mattered to me is friendships that I made there that lasted a lifetime. Uh, right. I still stay in touch with uh, many of my uh, roommates from uh, my student years. Uh, one of my roommates, Julie, uh, was my bridesmaid and came to yes. my wedding. Yes. And then I flew to California for her wedding and we do try to stay in touch. Uh, second winning uh, postdoc to UC Berkeley was a very important uh, achievement. Uh, I found yes. myself uh, at that time at, at the top uh, public university um, and for the first time at a very large university. Um, and uh, it, it's a good department, it was a good department, uh, Department of Public Health that gave me a big push uh, in life as well as acquainting myself with life in California, which is very different from just about any other place in the United States. Yes. And finally, uh, sometimes people tell me they did not know I'm an immigrant and that always makes me happy since it means that I fit in and my accent is not as pronounced as it is. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, you accumulated a lot of skills while teaching economics at UT, University of Texas. Now, how do you achieve novelty, let's say, in your special interest area of healthcare economics? Well, in my special area of health economics, it's not very difficult. Every year is a great year to teach health economics since healthcare reform in the United States, which was ushered by President Obama when he was elected in 2008. It's one of the most popular fields uh, within economics. And um, my class is always sold out. And I up update my lectures every semester I teach because the field changes so much. I see. Well, so you, you update out of need and according Absolutely, to what has yes. happened. Yeah. Well, I know that University of Texas is rated one of the best universities in America now. My question is, what do you do to stay competitive and successful in the times of the pandemic? Well, UT went a long way to keep faculty and student life uh, safe without compromising quality of teaching as well as research. Naturally, we have mask wearing um, enforced uh, on campus at all times. Ventilation system, of course, was updated to make teaching uh, safe. And for most courses, there are options to take them online. So uh, if a student feels sick, they can always watch a recording and not go to class and uh, while not feeling well. Here's an example. Um, in my microeconomics course um, last semester that I just finished uh, that included 700 students, uh, the course was entirely online. Of course, with that many students, it was impossible to teach it on Zoom. So the university for these large classes actually offered ours a large production team to record our lectures. 
where I was able to be alone in a room recording my lectures with no mask since there was no one else there. And the team was sitting in another room combining my slides and uh, my lecture together, putting it together and producing uh, good quality videos that I was posting for my students. At the end of the class, I was surprised to see that my teaching evaluations didn't even suffer. And students like being able to see lectures on demand, to go back, you know, repeat certain parts of the lecture uh, as necessary. I see. So there are pluses to lecture online. Okay. Well, uh, I of course, UT is very good at doing it, and your courses are good. No wonder they are so popular. Uh, but what would you say is the most attractive characteristic of the U.S. American society in general and American universities in particular? United States is known for its meritocracy. Unfortunately, um, social mobility has been decreasing in the United States as income inequality over time is rising. However, um, Academia stays meritocratic, I believe. Um, uh -huh. Promotions are always based uh, only on your achievements. Um, and, you know, as we say, publish or perish, uh, but that also means, yes. Yes. you know, you're judged based on the quality of your publications, you know, not on your background or income or anything else. So I see. So meritocracy is your answer. Very good. That's you are very optimistic. That's, thank goodness. That's for your good. Um, all right. Thank you. Let us discuss what enabled your success in the U.S. What were the features of your cultural heritage that helped you here? Well, I would say three culture-backed things helped me. Uh, first, I was able to go to college in my first year in the United States. Uh, and it was one of the best liberal arts colleges where I got to know my professors closely because I was attending fairly small classes and received a lot of individualized attention at Eddie Scott College. Second, uh, education and mathematics uh, was very strong um, in Ukraine and strong analytical background was very helpful, especially in graduate school. And finally, women in my culture, I expected to work full time. Mm -hmm. um, my right. mother worked, my aunts worked, my grandparents always worked. Uh, right. So it's a part of my DNA. I do not allow flexibility on the subject. So I always kept my job uh, no matter what, even after uh, having three kids, uh, despite uh, different opinions from my in-laws. Uh, uh -huh. My cultural background affected my choices in life. Um, here, despite other avenues being open to American women. And I enjoy my work and I'm glad I'm able to combine, uh, combine it with everything else. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I am wondering if, in what way did your ideas about US Americans change after you arrived to this country? Uh, the U.S. Americans, about what I expected to be, also the importance of religion for many people was and still uh, a bit of a shock. Um, I started my life in the United States by going to Agnes Scott College, which is in Georgia, south of the United States, where it was especially strong. Um, and th th that was and is still a surprise. Well, what it is, it is, right? Anyway, um, yes. let, let me ask you this. Another culture-related question. What are the major differences, uh, to your mind, between your original culture and the quintessential all-American culture, as you see it? Well, there are quite a few differences, but I would say the major one is corruption. Um, being able yeah. to receive promotions and jobs, uh, enter graduate school without uh, bribing anyone um, was, uh, I would say, a major uh, improvement upon um, Ukrainian culture. Gifts uh, uh, were always expected in Ukraine for all promotions. 
Um, for example, uh, when I was leaving for college for the first time, my mother made sure I had ample number of gifts to give to my professors. And of course, I never had to use them. And I'm, I'm a proud to have the chance to attend one of the top liberal arts colleges, Agnes Scott College in Atlanta, and was able to graduate without ever having to give any gifts to anyone. Um, receive scholarship, again, no gifts necessary, everything was merit-based. And now as I am a professor, I have to explain to my students who bring me gifts for recommendation letters and yeah. my teaching assistants that it's absolutely not necessary in the United States. Yeah, and this is a surprise for them. Well, good. Uh, thank you for, um, for your answer. I quite agree with you, Helen. I would like to ask one more question about what enabled your success. I want to ask you what helped you uh, to be a can-do achiever and what advice would you be able to provide to our multicultural audiences? Uh, sure. Uh, one is uh, tread your own path and get a college degree, which is a base for success in a, within academia. Uh, number two, maximize your happiness, uh, even when it does not fit the definition of success set forth by your peers or your culture. And finally, enhance your mathematical and analytical backgrounds uh, to get a handle in academia as well as in life. Um, thank you so much. It's short but sweet. Uh, and I believe that your answer will come in handy for all those who seek success in American academia and beyond. Yours is a story of great success in the U.S. And I thank you for being you. Now it's time to do takeaways. I do recommend three takeaways from our interview. One, Helen Schneider is the role model of can do success in American academia. Two, remember Helen's advice on success, college degree, happiness, and studying mathematics. Three, order the book, How They Made It in America, to learn more about how to be a success in the US. And uh, finally, let us connect via YouTube, via book site and via email. If you send me an email, I will send you my book if you pay shipping and handling, of course. And now um, let us say goodbye. And please subscribe to our uh, channel. Helen and I wish you lots of luck and lots of health in 2001. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.